Good evening. Once again, my name is Ken Miller. I'm the director of Bayless Public Library. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight to this program. We are delighted to have uh, Ian Mindikowski here from the uh, Tequamanan area um, libraries, school public library, right? Yeah. And um, he's going to talk about ebooks and how to how to to download ebooks and um, um, audiobooks. So um, I'd like to uh, to thank the uh, friends of the library for all of the things that they've done to help uh, make these programs possible. Uh, everything from the camera that we're using to record this to the screen that it's on to the carpet we're walking on has all been donated by the friends of the library. So without any further ado, uh, I'll uh, let Gian uh, go ahead. Thanks, Ben. And, uh, thank you. I'm Dia Mendikowski from the Kwamanon Area Public Library, and uh, this is the How to Download Ebooks and Audiobooks class. All right. So when I used to teach college classes, I would give you the handouts ahead of time. The students would rush through and get stuck along the way, but they're not paying attention to the lecture. They're going through the handouts. So I stopped giving the handouts during class, but then when I started teaching uh, adults in libraries, I thought I'd give my handouts safely, and the adults did the same thing. So I asked with the handouts in your hand, please don't rush ahead with your nooks and your Kindles and try to do everything on your own. Just sort of pay attention as we go along and then you won't get lost along the way and we'll have to backtrack and bring you back. So what we're talking about is how to get free ebooks for your nooks, Kindles, Sony e-readers, iPads through the library. Uh, you're all Bayless library members? Anybody not? Okay, good. It makes it easy. The only thing that you need, two things that you need in order to get those free ebooks uh, and downloadable audiobooks is your library card and your PIN number. How many people here do not know their PIN number for their library cards? Okay, you can get that at the circulation desk uh, when the class is done. You want to make sure you ask them to find out what your PIN number is. Anybody else? Okay, good. And you won't need that during the class tonight. So when you have your uh, library card number and your PIN number, you're going to visit a website called Great Lakes uh, Digital Library. To do that, you're going to... So you can use any web browser that you normally use, and I would recommend that when you request your books, you do it versus on a computer versus your device, because while well, some devices are supposed to work with the website, with your web browser in the, the Nook or the Kindle, I found more times than not it creates trouble, so the easiest thing to do is go right onto the computer and request your books, then you can download your, your device and read it. Um, some of you may have luck trying this on your device, but I would advise against it if you're a little nervous about running into trouble because I've seen a lot of trouble trying to do it that way. Uh, for the sake of tonight, I'm going to use Internet Explorer, which a lot of people use. You can use any browser that you uh, typically use. I don't see my other icons on here, but there's Firefox, Google Chrome, Safari. Any of those on your computer will work the exact same way. So I'm going to click on this blue E for Internet Explorer. <coughs> and I probably need to click, click to the wireless here first. Normally I'm uh, here about an hour ahead of time to prepare and get ready, but the snow kind of held me up. This is Bayless too. Oh, is that the wrong one to connect to? Bayless two. Yep, Bayless two. Let's see. If it worked. Yep. Okay. So this bar across the top, this long white bar, is known as the address bar. If you click in there once and type a website and hit enter, it's going to take you to that website. So. Uh, on your handout, step one, the very first uh, step has the website that we're going to be using today, and it's digitalmedia.gldl.info. Is that what we use at home also? Yes. This is uh, the library's collection of ebooks and downloadable audiobooks. So here is the website where we're going to be able to browse for all of our books that we can download. It's going to have Hi. Any extra handouts for these? Just got started. All we're doing is visiting uh, step one for this website where we get okay. the ebooks and audiobooks. So you can have that too. Yeah. Okay, so this is the website where all of your requesting is going to be done from. 
Uh, those of you uh, that have a, a Kindle, if you could raise your hand for me. That has a Kindle? Yeah, yeah, if you have a Kindle. Okay, so a little over half. How many people here have Nooks? Okay, one, and Kendall's how to do it already. Okay, Samsung. what's it? Samsung? Tablet. Okay, Samsung tag, tablet. Any, any other devices? Sony e-reader? I have iPad. iPad, good. iPhone. iPhone, great. And what was yours? Did you have your hand raised? Me? Yep. Uh, I have Kindle. A oh, Kindle, okay, sorry, I didn't see it the first time. Uh, any other devices here? iPod. iPod, okay, iPod. Okay, with the iPod, and the iPhone and the iPad, you can download from the App Store or from the website that I'll show you here. You can get an app for the Kindle app, and the Kindle app will work just like a Kindle when you use this stuff. So as we talk about Kindles, think about your devices as being Kindles, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the reason I say this is because the, uh, the books here, if you want to save these to your, your device, if you have a Kindle, you do not need to plug it into the computer. It will all be done through your Amazon account. So it'll transfer from your Amazon account, or from the, uh, your choices on the Great Lakes Digital website, to your Amazon account, to your Kindle. Now everybody else is going to have to plug in and use a piece of software called Adobe Digital Editions. So, um, I'm sorry, what's your device? Samsung. Samsung. Okay, so you have a Samsung, so you're going to have to plug the Samsung into the computer in order to put the books on it. Okay. So uh, what we're going to have to do is there's a piece of software to put those books on there called Adobe Digital Editions. So anybody who has anything but a Kindle or any of the Apple products that can have a Kindle app on it, you're going to have to download Adobe, Adobe Digital Editions. To do that, you have a one-time setup from this uh, website right here, and I'm gonna walk you through that process. The very first time you're gonna do this, you have to download a piece of software called Adobe Digital Editions, unless you have Kindle or a Kindle app, you do not need to worry about this step. So we're gonna take care of that first off and get to the fun part of ordering the books here. So first thing you wanna do is, after you type in the website, uh, that we have the top digitalmedia.gldl.info, you're going to scroll down the very left side of the uh, web page, you're going to see digital software. There's two different uh, things here. There's Overdrive Media Console and Adobe Digital Editions. The first one, Overdrive Media Console, is if you want to listen to audiobooks from this site. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the ebooks, Adobe, Adobe Digital Editions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This is how we're going, if it's the first time to install it on your home computer. And Ken, do you have them set up here already for people to use if they want to plug in or no? Like if somebody doesn't have a computer at home in order to, to do this, do you have a digital editions on the computer? No? Okay. So whatever computer you're using, you're going to have to install this on. If you click on that, it gives you two choices. The same two choices we just looked at, digital editions or overdrive. So let's go ahead and click on digital editions again. And it's going to bring us to a new web page here for adobe.com. And just uh, you'll just sort of be following the cues of clicking download and clicking next as we go through this. Okay, so now that we're here, we want to download now. So it's kind of hidden over on the right hand side, so it's download now. I used to provide a step by step of this process but they kept changing the website and the software, so by the time people get to, to do it, it wouldn't be the same as I had written down. So just kind of follow the, the cues of download now, download, and all those words. And so the next step is kind of read through the page. If you have a Mac or if you have Windows, you go ahead and uh, pick those there. So I have a Windows machine. Anybody here have a Mac? Okay, uh, but you have a Kindle though, right? Both. Both, okay. Um, so you won't need this for the Kindle, but uh, if you're using this for anything else and you want to download the right version uh, for your software, so I'm going to click on Windows. And then down at the bottom here, it asks me if I want to run or save the installer. I'm going to go ahead and say Run. And it's going to start to download. 
should be pretty fast here. Okay, any questions so far? Have I lost anybody yet? Okay. Can we say run or save? Uh, computer. You would say run. What save does is it saves that installer file to your computer and it's going to be there until you delete it. If you run it, it strictly runs it from memory so it doesn't take up extra space in your computer. Okay. And I don't know about here, but internet was really slow in Newberry today. So, um, just be a second here. Well, actually about three minutes that's frozen on. Uh, so we'll see. Go ahead. So what, basically what you're doing is getting language, setting up language so it can talk to, like, downloading the books. Uh, what I, I'm setting up um, software that can talk to Nooks and right. Samsungs and... So you're just putting in a tool here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just a tool that's just for those in order to take the books that we download from this website and to put them on your devices that are not Kindles. Okay, any questions? It'll take up a minute 52 here? No? Okay, now we're, we're early on the process here. There's always a computer glitch somewhere along the line. Uh, so this won't be too bad if it's just a little bit slow because all we have to do is download this once. Once we get the eBooks uh, downloading, those come a lot quicker than the software. So this is a one-time pain you just have to worry about. Uh, from home on your computer, do it once, and then you can do it. Uh, you can keep doing uh, the downloads of the books without having to worry about this until you get a new computer. I have something on here that says Amazon Kindle. Oh, maybe there's a Kindle app on that. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the device. You're actually the All first. All I know is how to turn it on. So. Okay, so if you have a Kindle app, um, right I, I can take a look at that really quick. Yeah, okay, you have a Kindle app, so uh, you don't need to worry about this part of the, of the segment of the class here. And I'll, I'll let Kindle users know when, when you'll step back in here and uh, uh, can download everything. So, all right, 53 seconds left. Um, go ahead. You had mentioned that if you don't have a Kindle, you have to connect it to your computer. Yes. Is there a certain device you have to buy for this connection? Uh, it should come with whatever you got. What did you have again? Oh, I don't have well, them process, but my grandkids do. Okay. I got them some kind of tablet for Christmas, and I don't remember what it is, but they can download e-books onto it. Okay. They, every device you buy should have what's called a USB cable, Okay. and yeah. this USB oh, cable sure will is. plug in okay. to the computer, and oh, I thought that beep was my computer. I guess it's somebody else's device there. 19 seconds left, very slow 19 seconds, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, once we get through this, uh, it'll be pretty pretty painless here. I appreciate the questions already to help stall for time. And I already had this installed on the computer and I uninstalled it just as I walked in the door because I want to show you the process. So every time I teach a class, I uninstall it. All right, one second. All right, there we go. So now it's going to run the security scan, security scan and it's going to pop up with a license agreement. These license agreements are long legal documents that most people just click I agree and go through. I recommend you don't do that. They are long and boring, but to be a responsible computer user, it's always best to scroll through and read what you're agreeing to. Most of it's pretty innocent, um, but you just want to make sure. You just never want to sign something that you have never read. So uh, I have read this way more times than I can count, um, and I'm not going to sit here during class and read it again. So I'm going to accept the terms of the license agreement. And once I do that, I'm going to click Next. As this is installing, you're going to see the button Next to click over and over and over again. Um, same thing here. This is just the basics that they where they put everything. If you're an advanced enough computer user that you can decide what where you want these, by all means change them. But you don't need to change anything. You just click next again. And now it tells you where you want to install. Ask where you want to install it. Again, if you're an advanced computer user who wants to put it somewhere else, go ahead and do it. But you all, all you really need to do is click install now. So next, next, install. Okay, and it's completed already. We'll hit close. Okay. 
you do not need to worry about this screen. What this screen is is because I've been teaching this class and using the software for multiple uh, versions of the software and it's just detecting an older version of the software on here. It's only because I keep reinstalling it. So I'm gonna skip that step. You don't have to worry about that. You will not see that unless you've previously installed this software before, which I don't think anybody here has, have you? Okay, so now it's done. The click done, so essentially it's next, next, install, done. Those are the three buttons you'll hit. They'll probably change that again in a couple of weeks. And it'll just be what extra next or anything. Did I see a hand go up over here? No. Okay. All right. So for right now, we're not going to worry about this because we want to go and shop for some books uh, through our library's website here. So I'm just going to minimize that and go back to Great Lakes Digital Libraries. Now, before we start searching for books, I do want to let people know that this uh, downloading ebooks, especially from libraries, has become very popular. It's become popular not only uh, up in the UP, but across the entire country, and libraries are having trouble keeping up. There is such a great demand that we keep buying books, and the more books we buy, the more demand's out there. So there's sometimes going to be a wait list for some of your favorite authors, um, so you're going to have to wait. Uh, a little while while the other people return those books because only so many people can have books checked out at a time. Uh, so the best thing to do is to kind of go through and place some holds just like you would on the popular new collection here. Uh, and one of the nice things is sometimes they come quicker than you expect because uh, when I was first preparing this class about uh, uh, two years ago, I went through and I put some uh, items on hold because I always go through and each, before each class test what, what I'm talking about to make sure it still works. And those items, I put them on hold, I went to dinner, I came back to work. By the time I came back from dinner, I had two, two of those books waiting for me. So it can come quickly. That's the nice thing is, um, with the library, uh, you've got a little bit more of a wait time because it's not 24 seven. But with this thing, if somebody returns a book and your book becomes available, it can be two in the morning. And if you're up at two in the morning trying to find something to read, you might be able to download that book. So I always start out by uh, having somebody pick a favorite author in the room and we can see if we can find any books. So who is a favorite author? Anybody? Patricia Cornwell. Cornwell, okay. So we have three things in our search box here. We have this uh, big white box for our search term. We have a uh, drop down menu where you can choose title, creator. Some people are confused by the word creator there, it just means author. So title, author, or ISBN, I would recommend searching by title or author. It's going to be much easier on you. So we're going to choose creator and choose Cornwell. Now you see the third box says all formats. This is something you want to pay attention to because uh, Kindle books are the only format that the Kindles can handle. So you want to make sure that that book you're getting is in the Kindle book format. Most other readers can handle both the Adobe EPUB ebook and the Adobe PDF ebook. So those are the other two that you have options for uh, if you have uh, any other device. And these two are if you're going to be downloading audiobooks, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So for right now, since I made all the Kindle people wait while we downloaded that software, we're going to start out with the Kindle people. So Kindle book, we have Cornwell, Creator, and we're only searching for ones that are available for the Kindle. Okay, so there are some Kindle books. There are five available, and I'll show you a couple of things here. First off, available copies, zero. Library copies, two, which means two copies are owned, but they're both checked out right now. And uh, let's see, typically they give the wait list, but I don't see, there must not be a wait. So we're going to have to reserve that by placing a hold. So if you ever <coughs> see the word place a hold, it means you cannot get that one immediately. Uh, here's something that I was wrong on. I forget that one or two of these titles sometimes come up with Kindle devices via USB only. So um, with that, uh, you, I think if they come up like that, you are going to have to download that software we talked about. So I apologize to Kindle users. I forgot that we'll, I've seen that only once before. Most of them don't need the USB. I'm not sure why those do that. Do you have any idea, Ken? No. No? Okay. 
So we also have EPUB ebook and PDF ebook available for uh, to place a hold for those that have Nooks and uh, other devices. So I'm going to go through. What I'm trying to find, it looks like for some reason it must be the publisher has decided that Kindle devices by USB only. So we're going to actually pick a different author because I want to show you how to do it without the USB device first. So that would just be plugging in that cable that comes with your Kindle into the computer and going through those initial download steps that we just talked about to get that software on there. Um, I think I've only seen that for Bishop Cornwall. I think it's the only time I've ever seen it come up. So if you do have that, you will need to plug in your device. So who is another author we can try? Mitch Album. Okay. I'm not sure if he'll be in here, but let's see. I was wrong. Timekeeper. Okay. This one. There are three copies, zero available. Okay, here's one. Have a little faith. One copy available out of the one copy. So we can get this today. When you see here, add to cart. That means you can get that book. Up here, place a hold means that you have to wait for that book. So we're going to actually get the one that we don't have to wait for right now. We're going to add this to cart. Now, this process is a lot like going to the grocery store. You go to the grocery store, you put the food in the cart. Are you done? No, you're not done because what do you have to do next? Check out. check out. That's good. You never want to forget when you're doing this process that you have to check out. If you don't check out, it's like leaving your cart in the store and they're eventually going to put that food away if you're not there attending to it. So uh, <coughs> same thing happens here. So if that book you just found, you don't check out, uh, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to check it out in order to get it. So right here, we have uh, have a little faith. It just tells us the, the basics here. You get it for 14 days. Up here it tells you that it will remain in your cart for 45 minutes. So it's like leaving that. If you left your computer, take a phone call, you got 45 minutes to take care of this from your cart. You've got two options. Continue browsing. Proceed to checkout. I always recommend you go right to checkout because if you go and search for multiple books, you may get so wrapped up in searching that you lose out on some of the stuff in your cart. So just go ahead and check it out right away. So we're going to proceed to check out. And it's going to ask you for your library. I'm going to use Dequamanon because that's where my card is through. Uh, but you will want to use uh, uh, Bayless. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I lost my keys for a second. It's like a snowstorm and no house keys. That's great. Okay, so I have my library card. Uh, do you have a barcode on like a small card like this, is that what you have, Ken? Or do you have big cards? Okay, with uh, barcodes on them. Okay, so you've got your barcode on the big card. You're going to go ahead, select your library, and you will need to type that in. So I will type mine in. And your PIN number, this is what if you don't have, you want to go to the circulation desk before you leave and get that. Here at Bayless, your PIN number is automatically set to the last four digits of your phone number. Thanks, Ken. So once you enter your library card number and your PIN number, you get to sign in. If you're going to be requesting multiple books in one session, you will not need to sign in again. I have a question. Okay. When I tried to do this, it kept coming back and saying it wasn't recognized. It, it wasn't the right number. What, what do you do if it does that? I would call the, the library and see if, uh, if there's a problem with your card. Um, I had my card right in front of me. Maybe the PIN number was wrong? I had my own PIN number. <laughs> I know what that was. Okay. So there, are, there are a couple of reasons why library cards uh, won't work. Uh, one of them is there's just an error on our part. But uh, if you haven't used your card in a whole, one whole year here at the library, um, it uh, it's reset, and we we have asked you to come in and verify your address and phone number and all of your contact information. So sometimes that's what happens to folks. 
and and they don't realize it. Thanks, Ken. So I would definitely recommend calling the library circulation desk and try to find out what, what the status of your account is. So right here, this gives me one more final chance to look everything over before I actually check the item out. It's gonna once again tell me, it's 14 day checkout. It's gonna tell me that it's a Kindle book. Make sure that if you're downloading the Kindle book, you have a Kindle or a Kindle app. If you have any other devices, you don't wanna get this item. Down here, it tells you the current status of your account. You're allowed four total checkouts. The current number of titles checked out is two. Checkouts remaining after this one is one. So uh, you get a maximum of four, but you can return any of those uh, early so that you don't have to wait until those, uh, that two weeks expires. So right now as I check this out, everything looks okay. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm my checkout. So this is where it's a little different for Kindle users than everybody else. There's this button here that says Get for Kindle. You're gonna click on that. When you click on that, it's gonna take you to the Amazon page. Uh, even though you're at the Amazon page, does not mean you're buying this book right now. The one way to be sure you're not buying this book is this button here, Get Library Book. That means it's a library book, it is free to check out. If you kinda of click around the site and accidentally end up at somewhere that's saying that it's going to be to buy this book or there's gonna be money, go back to where you started from, go back to the Great Lakes Digital site if you have to, but this, when it says get library book, you are, uh, you are safe. I had somebody call me one time in a panic and said, it took me to the Amazon site, am I gonna to have to pay for this? Just make sure it says get library book and you're, you're not gonna to have to pay for this. Um, you will need to sign in to your Amazon account. If you do not have an Amazon account, you'll have to get one, though I think anybody getting a Kindle is likely to have signed up through Amazon to register with an Amazon account. Um, if you do not have one, this, uh, this account button here will let you set it up. I'm already signed in. I'm luckily signed up for the other night because half the time when I teach these classes, I forget my password when I'm up here. Um, and already set to go, but you will have to sign in. So now that you do that, you say get library book. And I do not have a Kindle, but if I did have a Kindle, at this point, it would ask you which Kindle you'd like to send it to. The reason I ask you which Kindle is because sometimes, let's say you're a married couple that have two Kindles on the same account, it's going to ask you if you want to put it to one or the other. So there'll be a little menu here about which Kindle you have. Um, if you only have one Kindle in your account, no worries, you just click on the button to bring it to that Kindle. The next time you load your Kindle up, don't plug it in or anything, you just bring that Kindle up with the connection, whether it's the 3G or wireless connection, you now have that book on your Kindle. So that's how easy it is for the Kindle people. Any questions on that? So you're downloading this to your computer? Well, what actually, you never you download say? it to the computer. Oh, I you thought just, you said earlier that it was best if you download it to your computer first. Um, no, you know, if you use it to to um, select the book from your computer. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's that's what I meant. Is to, what okay. we're doing is we're just using the web page to do our selection. Okay. That's all we're doing. We're not downloading anything for the Kindle people. We're okay. just going to the website to use the computer for the website. Some people you try to use okay. the web browser on their Kindle to do what we just did with the Great Lakes Digital Library. Right. And because uh, certain devices don't allow other windows to pop up, that creates a problem uh, when you get okay. into that, so. Okay, thank you. Yep, okay. So now we have successfully sent a book to our Kindle. Go ahead. Does your Kindle have to be on? Uh, your Kindle only has to be on when you want to go read it. Your Kindle... Uh, so it can just be anywhere in the house or does it have to be next doesn't to doesn't even have to be with you in the same city. If, uh, if I left my Kindle in Newberry, I could have done this. When I head back to Newberry, turn my Kindle on, the there it is waiting here. for me. So it's, it's a very nice like that and I'm hoping that down the road uh, the nooks and the other devices start doing it wirelessly like that because it's very, very convenient. Okay, so that's the, the basic steps for the Kindle users. So let's jump back to everybody else with the exact same thing we just did, except we're gonna do it for the other devices. Again, I'm gonna go through to this tab up here to get back to Great Lakes Digital Library. 
Okay, and again, we're going to search, select our field and our format. Now, I'm going to do one that I always use for every class because it's guaranteed to be in. It's a guide to Canadian gardening from the 1950s. <laughs> and not only it's not really a hot topic right now, there are 50 copies of it available. So if 49 other people decide to read that book tonight, uh, we'd still have this in class without much weight. So I'm going to go ahead and type Canadian gardening. I'm going to choose title now instead of creator. And then formats. I know it's a PDF and uh, we could have left it blank if we wanted to try for all of them, but I'm going to choose Adobe PDF eBook. Remember, the, the PDF eBook will work for everybody except for the Kindle users. So sorry, Kindle users, no Canadian gardening for you. So what should we put at this point with that Samsung? With that one, uh, you, have a, you have a Kindle app on there, so I would, uh, what I would do is I'd click on that Kindle app to get started and do you have an Amazon account, do you know? Okay, so you, uh, I would go through that exact same process that we just did prior for the Kindle users and then log into your, your Kindle uh, app and your book should be waiting there for you. So I click on the Kindle thing up there? Actually, what, what you do is you, you know how the step before the Canadian Guardian book, we just did the uh, Mitch Album book? That step-by-step -step process, you follow that those steps for the Kindle. Oh, you're just saying about right now what you search for? Yeah, I'm sorry. You would do the Kindle book right. for your app. I'm sorry, I misunderstood what your question was. Okay, so there's our Canadian Gardening book. All 50 copies are currently available, so if anybody wants one after this class, you can check it out. The most I've seen checked out at once were three, t three people at one time when I was teaching this class, and I'm curious where that came from. So we've got 50 out of 50 available. Who remembers the next step? We just did this with the Mitch Album book. Add to cart. Good. Add to cart. Okay. After you add to cart. Check out. Check out. Good. Okay. We just verify everything's right there. This will be my last checkout allowed right now. That's okay. We're going to confirm checkout. Now here's where it's different. If you remember the Kindle users, had get for Kindle right there. We have the option to download. So we're going to download it. And so it pops up down here with the choice to open or save or cancel. Um, just a little different than your software that we installed. Instead of just opening or running this, I want you to save this just to make sure it's uh, pretty seamless when you transfer it to your device. So we're going to go ahead and click save, and then it gives us the chance to open it. So save and then open when you're downloading these. And it's going to bring up that software we just installed, Adobe Digital Editions. Once you hit open, it brings that software up for us. Except there's no Canadian Gardening book there. Let's, oh, there it goes. It's really slow on the internet right now. So should we install that Adobe or no? Because uh, Patricia Cornwall needed it. Yeah, for that, I think if you want to use Patricia Cornwall for the, the uh, Kindle app, yes, I'd recommend downloading that software if you want any of those. But I've only seen Patricia Cornwall. Um, so Kindle users, if you have one that says USB only, you really want to get, go ahead and install the software. When you do that, just any time? Uh, any time before you download the book. So. You can do it when you go home tonight and then not worry about it until you actually get one of the books or you can do it just before you download that. Okay, question? <laughs> Regarding on the Wish book, if that, if that book's not available right at that time and you put it on your wish list, do, oh. Oh, do you just, is that all you need to do or do you need to um, send that information to the checkout thing? That's a very good question. I'm going to walk through the placing holds and wish list just after we get this. Okay. Um, that's okay. Uh, it's, I always like to see people ask some questions and being awake. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got uh, our book here. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that if you don't have any device, you can read these right on your computer. You're not limited to buying a $200 device to get free library books. If you have a computer, any computer you're sitting at that has a software, you can download it and view it right in here. So right now, if we want to go through and read the entire 
uh, book, there's a few white pages, pages at the beginning, we can go through and read Canadian Gardening right on our computer. We don't want to do that though. We want to transfer that to our Nooks and uh, Sony e-readers and other devices. So in order to do that, you want to switch over to library. This is, this is uh, also shown on other versions of the software as a bookshelf with three books. So if you see anything, that, if you don't see library up there, but you've got three books, the older versions have it set up like that. But if you get the newest version, it's going to have the word library. We'll click on it, and now we have all the books that we have downloaded, which is only this one, and then there's a starter kit for the software that comes with it. So we've got our Canadian Garden book right here, and then let's uh, imagine we plug our device in right now. We take our Nook, we plug it into the computer. What's gonna show up is right down here, below all these items, it's going to say Dion's Nook, or whatever you've named it. So it'll show up as your Nook right here. All that you do then to get the item on your Nook or your e-reader or other device is to move your mouse up to the Canadian Gardening book, hold the left button down, and drag that to the word Nook and let go, and it will copy that over to your Nook. So it's one extra step in the Kindles. It's still not bad. You just have to take that item and drag it over, drop it into the Nook. Does that make it sense to everybody? Any questions on that? Okay, so we take that, then we unplug our Nook, and we can take our Nook anywhere we want. We don't need an internet connection. We don't need the computer. We just have the Nook and our Canadian Gardening book. You can read anywhere that you've got your Nook with you. So it's just a matter of using the computer in order to get the books and transfer them over. Once you've done that, you get to leave the computer alone and just take your device and read your books. Okay, so now, a couple of things I wanna talk about before we talk about holds. Uh, one of those things is returning books early. So I assume there's a few fast readers in the room and four books will not keep you satisfied for 14 days. So you wanna finish a book, get rid of it so you can start getting more. Two different ways to do it, depending on your device. We're gonna stick with the non-Kindles right now because that's what we have up. But if you wanna return a book, you bring up your computer, you bring up Adobe, Adobe Digital Editions. To do that, if you uh, don't know how to get to it, you're gonna go down to your Start button down here. You're gonna bring it up and look for it either in this window or under All Programs. Click on that. and mine's right up the top there. So you bring up Adobe Digital Editions, you're gonna see all the books that you have here. This right here will tell you the time limit that you have up there. You right click on the book you wanna return and you say, return borrowed item. It's going to make sure that if you wanna get rid of this book, do you really wanna return this? I'm gonna go ahead and say return because I'm sure. It takes it right off of here for you. So, that's returned, you, do, you get one more checkout now. So right now, if I went back to request another book, I had zero checkouts left, I'll have one checkout available already. Okay, so the next thing that uh, I wanna talk about with, uh, with the returns is the Kindles. So for the Kindles, you actually have to go log into your Amazon account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize this, and we have the web browser up, I've still got Amazon over here. I'm gonna bring Amazon up, and we're gonna pretend I have a Kindle again because I don't have a Kindle, so it's a, I'm just gonna talk you through this part of it. But if you look across these options here, in the Kindle store, there's a button called Manage Your Kindle. You're going to wanna to click on Manage Your Kindle. Oh, now it asks for my password. Let's see if I remember our first try. Got it. Okay, so if I had a Kindle, I would have that item that we just downloaded, which was the Mitch Album book. It's gonna give you all information about it, and there will be a button at the very end that you can choose to return that item early. So you wanna do it right from your account. If you've got four books checked out, there will be four books listed. You just go across the line in the book that you have checked out and you choose to return that book early. So 
the nooks and Sony e-readers and other devices. You have to transfer your books and return them via Adobe Digital Editions. For those of you using Kindles or Kindle apps, you're going to do, be doing it through your Amazon, through the Amazon webpage and your Amazon account. Comment, Ken? If I have uh, my book on my Nook, I've downloaded it through Adobe Digital Editions, it's on my Nook, which is disconnected from my computer, and I go to return it, how does it deal with the copy of that that's on my Nook? Very good question. Let me, let me get that to you. I haven't had that one before. Um, you, are you aware of yourself, or is it, was it okay? No. I thought it was just, um, <coughs> yes, let me, let me think about that. I think when you sync it again is when it's going to, uh, to take care of that, but let me just double check for sure. I just sort of took that one for granted, so. Um, so we've returned it for the Kindle, we've returned it for the Nook, and I'll get to Ken's question here in a little bit. Um, let's see where I was going with that. Um, Oh, I want to talk about late fees. Are there late fees in these books? No. No. So, what happens if you reach the 14th day checkout? It automatically expires. It returns to the uh, to the library. You can't read it anymore. Somebody else can read it, and you get. If you want to check it out again, you can check it out again. You can, uh, but you won't get any late fees on these. So that's a nice thing about that. And if you so if you forget those 14 days, and I've had that happen a number of times, I downloaded a few audiobooks and got to the first disc and forgot to listen to the rest of it, and then it just uh, expired on me without having to worry about it. Could you renew it before the 14 days is out, or do you have to lose it and then go back and... Okay, let me uh, check here. The log back in. For this to load up. I do not think you can renew it. Uh, Ken, do you, do you have any idea on that? Okay, because I don't think you can. I thought maybe there'd be a button I missed on here, just wanted to check. But you'd have to, that way if it's a popular book, somebody else gets a chance at it. Right. If it's not, you can just go back and download it again. Um, okay, so. We looked at getting how to download your books. We looked at how to return your books. And I want to talk about what happens when you find a book that you want that isn't able to be checked out yet. You have to wait for it. So we're going to pick a very popular one. Let me uh, think of one that's always checked out. I'm going to go down to a popular list here. Okay, here we go. Um, I got uh, found a book, uh, Double Dexter, uh, as part of Jeff Lindsay's Dexter series. Available copies zero, library copies one. We have two options. We have the option to add to wish list or to place a hold. I would recommend that if you want that book and you haven't put any other books on hold, place the hold. Because the hold is what's going to let you download that book when it comes available. Um, you're allowed three holds, I believe. So you've got, if you've got three holds already, that's when we go over to wish list. But to place a hold is very easy. You just click that place a hold. Make sure you've got the format that you have for your device. So when you see there's two choices here, EPUB or Kindle book. We'll go with the Kindle book. Both of them are going to have the same result. It's going to ask you for your email address. So you put your email address in, and then it asks for it one more time just to make sure you didn't make any typos. It wants to double check that you're putting the same email address in twice. And then you hit place a hold. I'm not going to because I don't want to take, uh, end up in the hold list for this one. But once you place a hold, it takes your email address and it saves that copy of the book. So when your turn comes up, it's going to send you an email with a link that you can download that book. So in your email, you can click on that, it'll take you right to the Great Lakes Digital Libraries, 
and let you download that book the same way we just did for the Kindles and for the other devices. You will have three days to download that book from your email address before it goes on the next person. So if you're waiting on a book and you only check your email once a week, I'd recommend checking your email at least a couple of every, every couple of days just to make sure that book hasn't arrived in there and you're gonna miss out on it. Is there a question? Well, is that a waiting list kind of thing? You can put a hold on and five other people have done it before you, then you're number six? Or? Yes, it is. So when we go back to the book where it says, oh, too far. Okay. So let's say available copy zero, library copies one. If there were people waiting, it would have a little bracket here that says, Three, three people waiting, so you'd be number four on that list. And if there's only one copy, that one copy goes down to each of the, the people there. But as you see, I've not seen one example of the wait list tonight. All the ones we went to might have been checked out, but you're next on the waiting list when that happens. So um, if there's nothing listed to the left here. Uh, so that's how you place a hold. You're allowed three holds. They come to your email address and give you a link that will open up Great Lakes Digital Library, and you can download it the same way we did for the devices uh, throughout the class here. Um, if you do not have uh, any holds remaining, if you've already put your three on there, or it's something that you just know you won't have time to read if it comes in, but you don't want to miss out on it later on, you can add to your wish list. It'll let you continue browsing or view your wish list. You can close this out. I'm going to continue browsing and show you how to get back to your wish list. You're going to go to my digital account. It may, if you haven't logged in for that day, it may ask you to log in again and remember how to log in. What do you use? Your library, 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 library card, card number and PIN number to log into this. So if it asks, it will ask you library card number, PIN number. We have six choices here. You can see what books you have on hold. You can see your wish list. So you click on your wish list. There's the book we just added there. It's got an option to place a hold on it, so if you've gone through your other holds, you don't have three holds uh, already, you can then place a hold on it and make sure you get that book later on down the road. So you can uh, uh, put the item in your cart if it's available, or if it's not available, you can place a hold on it or put it in your wish list. Any questions on that? How many can you put on your wish list at a time? I believe it's, uh, there's no limit on that. Um, and nobody has ever reported a limit to me, uh, but it's just a matter of you keeping track of your stuff, so. Okay. So I wanna talk about one more thing about browsing for books, because I know that a big part of this is you want a book right away. You don't wanna have to wait for all your books. And I've seen people come to the library and they start searching for books and every author that they put in is a, has a hold because the, if you get the most popular newest books, everybody's going to want them. Same thing with physical books, it's no different. I'm sure that there's some authors there that barely ever see the shelf uh, in the new section here because so many people are checking them out. So I'm going to teach you a couple of ways that you can browse just like you would. You walk in the library coming for a certain author, there's nothing here. You walk around the library, you find something you want to read instead. To do that, we're going to go back to the home button. That will take you right back to the beginning of the Great Lakes Digital Library site or you just type this website from step number one, uh, digitalmedia.gldl.info. And we've been dealing with this search box up here. If you wanna browse, you can scroll down and look at the new eBooks, new audiobooks, most popular, recently returned, forgotten favorites, any of those topics, or any of the genres over here, you can see it's broken out. Up here, we have audiobook fiction, audiobook nonfiction, ebook fiction, ebook nonfiction, and you can go through each of those different genres and pick what you want to browse. So let's say that we like humor. Click on humor. 43 humor books that you can browse through and see what's available. Place a hold, place a hold, place a hold. Okay, so humor wasn't a good one to. They're all checked out. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, we got one that's available. But here's a place that you're gonna typically find a book. We go back to home, recently returned. This means somebody just checked these books in and 
you have a better chance of finding them. So let's see if Stephen King's Quitters Incorporated is available. We click on that. Available mm -hmm. copies one, library copies one. So if you want a book right away, that's probably your best category to browse through. And uh, you can go through any of these and just kind of find something to read while you're waiting for those holds to come in for you. Did you say you had to type in something to get that category? Uh, for that category, all I did was I clicked on Home. Home. And then I scrolled down, so I took the scroll bar over to the right. And you look, here's new ebooks, oh. new audiobooks, most popular. Mm -hmm. Now, just because the most popular doesn't I mean it's checked out because this boy who couldn't sleep and never had to. I clicked on that earlier as a demonstration, thinking we could put a hold on it, but it was currently in. So you can browse through any of these, just like the new shelf uh, here. There are some books on the new shelf. There are some books checked out. Recently returned. So that's about the fourth one down. And then you hit this button to the right. You can just sort of browse through to the right or look at the complete list. 100, 100 of them showing up as recently returned. So you've got 100 options that will probably be there for you when you go to look for them. And that changes by what's being checked in. So when you go home and check this, there'll be more books checked in there depending on who checked them in tonight. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, I'm going to do a very brief overview of the audiobooks now. I have a question. Okay. They have this rating thing going on there. Do you have to do that? You do not have to do that. Uh, that's just for people that like to give their opinions on how the book was uh, that may down the road help others uh, with. Okay, so you the, don't have to do that? No, it just says that, like the average rating is three. Maybe you only want to read five star books. Oh, go ahead, Ken. Oh, um, five, five minutes, is that what? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I wanted to make it, I wanted to ask you to do something. I didn't mean to interrupt your answer, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I wonder if you would visit Bayless's um, website, which is www.baylisslibrary.org. If you scroll down on the left side until you see uh, downloadable audio and books, not very far down, it's on that list there in the blue. And would you click on that and see where it takes you? Wow. So I just wanted to show you that you can get to it from our website very easily. Great. So yeah, um, baylisslibrary.org is a lot easier to remember than digitalmedia.gldl.info. Um, I've taught this class so many times and I keep messing that up sometimes when I say it without looking at my sheets. So uh, baylisslibrary.org will take you there. Uh, oh, we already... by clicking the left-hand side, downloadable audio and e-books. Okay, and the other question? Can you preview a book using this system? Or do you just check it out? You would check it out and, and, and read it. And if you don't like it, you just yep. send it back. Okay. Yep, so I mean, you, essentially you, you take that few seconds to actually download it, you read two pages, don't like it, you just do the return depending on how you're set up. If you have a Kindle, you go to the Amazon web page, or if you have a Nook, you go through the uh, uh, Adobe Digital Editions. Okay, so how many people here are interested in the audiobooks? Okay, and what devices do you have? Do you have iPods? Uh, any? I have an iPod and Kindle. Player. Okay, uh, the like the Kindle and the Nook, they will not play the audiobooks. It has to be like the iPods or another MP3 player, or you some of these you can burn to CD and listen to in your car. So what we're going to do is, if you want to do the audiobooks, you're going to have to download one other piece of software. So at the beginning, we went to this Great Lakes Digital Libraries, and we scrolled down to digital software, and we had a choice of Overdrive Media Console or Adobe Digital Editions. Remember, remember Digital Editions is for the eBooks. Overdrive is for the audiobooks. You have to install this once in your computer. So we're going to click on Overdrive, <coughs> and this one gives us some choices here. If you want to put it on your Windows machine, Windows 8, Mac, but then a few more, there's Android, Blackberry, and iPhone or iPad. You can get the app right to the, those devices. 
or a Windows 7 phone. So you can run this, uh, this particular app right from your, uh, your iPhone, your iPad, or if you have an Android phone, uh, and it will play the audiobooks for you. So, go ahead. So you can't do it on the Kindle? No, you can't do it from the Kindle. Okay. Yep. Can you go to Amazon and get it, uh, audio book off of the Amazon on the Kindle? Uh, I don't believe they have them to listen to. Do, but am I wrong on that? Because I didn't hear. Uh, she wants to know if Amazon offers any audiobooks for the Kindle, but I don't believe the Kindle has the, the ability for that. What about the Nook? I don't believe the Nook does either. Um, I know there are some ways that you can turn on a text the speech on certain books, but not all books, but uh, in terms of audiobook capabilities, I do not believe it. Though some of the newer Kindle models may, um, I can look into that for you. But in terms of this software, um, I don't believe the, the Kindles or the Nooks are going to be your answer for those. Um, your Samsung, though, could... When we bought it, the merch, we took it to Walmart to ask about the kind of stuff it does. And the gentleman said that he has audiobooks on this. Yeah, you can do that with yours. The, any of the the different tablets like that. that I don't should. know what I have to do to get them on there, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, this this may work for you, what we're doing right now, but if it doesn't, um, you may want to check with the library and, and just see what other options and maybe somebody can walk you through it. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I don't have those devices in front of me. I have a computer, so I'm going to choose Windows and then download now. Okay, we're installing software now, we're not saving books. So I'm just going to choose run instead of save. It's going to uh, download the software. It looks like a lot quicker than the other software came down. Maybe the internet's working again. It's run the security scan, and it starts running it. Oh, I already have it on here. I forgot to uninstall that one. So let me remove it, and I'll try it again. You won't have to do this because you shouldn't have it installed already. That was just uh, when I rushed in from the snow out there, I did not delete this one as well. Um, what this is going to let you do is transfer audiobooks that you download from this website to your different devices. Um, I do have some bad news for iPod users that uh, it's not on our end, but it's on the Apple's end. Apple likes to be very, very secure with their content, so they think that you're, you buy that device and they're worried about you stealing from other people's music collections. So every time, so when you first go and set this up uh, to use with your iPod, it wants you to delete everything on your iPod and set it up um, as a new user. Um, and if you have everything backed up, you're okay with it, but I've had some people that they don't know if they get all that music back on there, so it becomes a little difficult. Go ahead. Okay, I've got an iPod, uh -huh. it's an older one, Okay. and it didn't have me do that. Okay, it didn't? Well, no, but what, what I, okay, I downloaded the overdrive, uh -huh. And then I download them as a window, Windows Media, uh -huh. then you got to convert it over to iPod. And it automatically doesn't go through iTunes, it goes right straight to my iPod, somehow. Okay. Okay, and when it's all done, I don't know how to get them back off the iPod. That's a very good question. <laughs> um, the only way I've ever managed an iPod is through iTunes. Um, and it won't let you delete them when you're in OverDrive? I can't find them. I, 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 can, I can delete it from OverDrive, and it goes off the computer, but it doesn't go off the iPod. Okay. That's one of those questions I've never heard before, and I don't have an answer for you right now. Um, but I can see what I can find here. Uh, we get to the question and answer part. Uh, so let's see. Try this one more time. So just ignore that last part. I just had to uninstall that software because it was already installed. Now we're going to really try to install it. Um, but yeah, for iPod users, sometimes it does, I guess not every time, sometimes it does try to sync your iPod, wipe clean what you put on it. Uh, with my iPod, I have a shuffle, so it only holds so many songs to begin with, and I change them out every time that I go for a run or go to the gym or anything. So I don't really care about wiping everything clean, it's all on there. But the one person I helped in Newberry, 
Uh, it, she said it took her six months to get everything back out. Her husband lost everything the last time and she wasn't about to do it again. Um, so it's a personal choice, but there's some other options. Okay, this popped up now and we have that next button like we had before. So just click next. We have another uh, license agreement to read. I've read this. Click next. Here are the basics again that if you want to change it if you're advanced, you can. But let's just click next. So next, 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 next one more time. And it's going to install the software now, hopefully. There it goes. Okay, and we click close. It is installed on our computer now. Is that simple? Just download it, click through all those next, agree to the license, and you're set to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Great Lakes Digital Library, and we're going to go and find an audiobook. So let's go to audiobook, biography, and autobiography. And then wait when the internet loads it. There are a few different things that uh, you can do with these, and this is uh, this is one that uh, will help us here. Oh, and it's okay. So here's one. You want to pay attention to what these formats can be played on here. So we've got two different formats: MP3 and WMA. The MP3 version you can listen to on a computer, on a Mac. You can burn the CD, you've got a uh, Windows uh, media device, an iPod or MP3 player, so pretty much that covers everything. This one will not work on a regular MP3 player, so if you don't have like an iPod but you got some other like a, maybe a Sony from Walmart or something, it will not work with the WMA according to this. So we're going to go ahead and choose the MP3 audiobook. And that burn to CD feature is very nice if you don't have any of these devices but want to listen to it in your car. Uh, you just need some blank CDs from the store and you can burn it to a uh, CD and listen to those CDs in your car. I've done that a number of times. Is there any fee involved in that? Uh, well, except for buying your CDs. Um, you can buy a spindle of CDs, right. fairly cheap. Uh, so it depends, it's, uh, it's up to you, but it costs, uh, I mean, sometimes you can get sales where it's like 15 bucks for 50 CDs. Oh yeah, I wasn't concerned about the CDs. Yeah, but no, this is all the same thing. This is all free, just like those eBooks we were doing. It's all through the library. Uh, you do have a checkout uh, period as well. The CDs don't really expire. It's all in good faith that you will destroy those CDs when you're done with them. Um, that's what they expect you to do, but they don't show up in your house and check that. So if you listen to it on the 15th day, you're not going to be arrested, but they, uh, they want you to be done and, and pass, so pass on the next user. Not everybody has a copy. So if you click on that, you download directly, or does it do you go to your PC first? And then uh, it's going to your PC, PC, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, I just wanted to, so we're going to choose the MP3 version because it has more options. What would we pick? Uh, you would uh, you would pick MP3 as well uh, because it just covers all devices. So when all these things are highlighted in color, yeah. you know that's the best thing to go for. So we're gonna go ahead and add to cart. Same thing that we did earlier. Okay, we got seven days on these. I'm sorry, I said 14 days on them, but it was seven for the for the audiobooks. So we're gonna proceed to checkout now. I'm going to have to log back in, it looks like. I've choose the right library. Okay, so again, it's going to remind me, I'm allowed four total, I've got three checked out, checkouts remaining after this checkout, zero, so that Canadian Guardian book I returned is, uh, 
is no longer taking up room on the account, so I have room to check this out. Okay, so I have the option to download now. It's not going to be send to your iPod or send to your Kindle or any of those things, it's just download. And it automatically opens up the overdrive that we chose. And then it says uh, format MP3. Let's see, you know all this stuff. Go ahead and click OK. That's going to uh, bring it into overdrive. Now, this is a very important part. What we just did, we click download, did not download this yet. This is the next step where you actually download it. You see each part says not downloaded, not downloaded. These have to be downloaded for me to actually listen to them. So I'm going to click OK. Got to make sure the check is uh, right next to the part you're downloading. Some people with slower internet may download a part at a time. But uh, if you got a fast internet like uh, Bayless has, you get them all at once. Click OK. If you'll notice at the bottom, downloading part one of seven, the Mickey Mantle novel. And so it's going to be counting down my progress down here for all those seven parts. So it's essentially a seven disc. Uh, CD. So if you get a spindle of 50 CDs, seven of those would go to burning this one to listen to in your car or other players. And we're still going through down part one of seven. Um, I'll probably stop it after uh, part one's done here. Okay, so what we're essentially going to do is going to look a lot like the uh, Adobe Digital Editions. Remember how we had our book in the one side and our nook shows up on the other and you drag and drop it? It's the same thing here. Here's our items we have checked out. Right down here is where your player is going to show up. You take this uh, when you download it and you drag it over to your item. Once it's downloaded, it's still downloading part one, so I can't do anything with it. So you're going to drag and drop that to your device that shows up down here. Go ahead. While we're waiting, um, could you just listen to it off your PC? Yep, I'm going to show you that as soon as. Uh, I just was scared. Yep, that's no, a good question because I was going to show you that as soon as part one got done here. Um, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. You kind of. I didn't know that you could drag and drop, but I think you click that transfer button. Oh, you might be right on that. And it'll it'll come up to transfer yep. where. I'm sorry. Of, uh, <coughs> Click transfer, I think, you, I don't know, I haven't tried drag and drop in a while, you might be, I don't remember, but yeah, transfer is probably your best bet though, thank you for pointing that out. So click transfer, and that's telling me I must have it all downloaded, but uh, then it'll set it up with your device plugged in. So you always want to have your device plugged in first though, before you hit that transfer button. Okay, part one is downloaded. If you want to listen to this on your computer, you can hit play. I have the volume down in mine. Peter but it'll just start playing, listen to it. Okay, so you've got those options there. It was kind of a quick rundown of the audiobooks. I know there's a lot more people in here interested in the ebooks as opposed to the audio, but I want you to know how to use both because they're both very good services. Um, I know a lot of people that are really starting to catch on to the audiobooks, and you know, somebody's cleaning or doing something in the yard, they have their, their MP3 player going and have uh, books they can download and listen to right as they're going through uh, doing whatever they want. Okay, any questions? On that? Uh, her first. Does, and then oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. Does the book transfer to the MP3 player like it does to the Kindle, or do you have to? You have to plug it in. I'm you do have to plug it in, yes. You with the USB, okay. Yes, when, when, you, when you hit that transfer button, make sure you're plugged in with the USB first. And then it just automatically, or it'll come up like this on the screen and you have to wait for it to... It's going to come up like this and walk you through the process. So when you click transfer, um, it's going to... Uh, it says, please connect your device. I don't have a device, but you're going to go through and click next and follow the menu options okay. there. So we connect our Samsung and... It should work that way as a tablet, but you you can probably get the OverDrive app on yours and do it right through your tablet without having to connect to a computer. Do you return the books then by just clicking delete? Uh, with those, uh, we want to... That's a good question. 
because they, they was removed from the collection is not. Yes, you're very right. Let me double check on that because I have not followed through on that for the audiobooks. Uh, and I'm not sure if we can, but I'll look that up here before we go. Okay, any other questions? Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to answer some of these questions. Uh, Ken had a question about what happens when you're, you return a book using Adobe Digital Editions and your Nook is not plugged in. Uh, I'll get to that question as well as the question about how to return the overdrive items and uh, any other questions that you have that weren't quite answered tonight. Okay, well you're welcome to stick around and we'll answer the individual questions or if you have to go and get home, uh, thank you for coming out tonight.